What's going on, people? Welcome back to another Opposition Preview. In this episode, I'm joined by Dan from West Ham Fan TV to look ahead to the game on New Year's Day. Um, Dan, thank you for joining us, um, first and foremost. And how you been, man? How you been? Look at West Ham so far this month. Only two wins, but, you know, still three points off the top four. Yeah, you know what? I'm just, I'm just happy we ended the, um, ended the month strong. Like, I was... I was... Mm. It was getting to me in a big way, man. It's like, I hadn't felt this. It seemed like a long time since I felt like West Ham being consistently crap. Um, <laughs> but I think a lot of teams have, have, have struggled in December. I think it's one of the months. Like Chelsea have only picked up three points more than us this this month. Um, you know, teams like Liverpool have dropped points. I think it's just like a tough month for, for, for a lot of teams. And then you've got like this whole inconsistency with some teams having time off for COVID, some teams not getting time off, not getting rests. And it's like, it's been such a weird time that I'm hoping mm -hmm. now we're out of it, we just get back to normal service and, what, and have things a little bit more equal. What, what's been your situation with COVID then so far? Is Have you guys had any problems this month? Um, we yeah, we personally I mean, we, have, have think, had it recently. Yeah, we I think like we haven't like had as many cases as some people. Um, the big one was Antonio had to miss it because he's, uh, I think, the Tottenham game and maybe one other game because his wife had it. His wife had the virus, so he had to isolate. Um, and I cannot like, remember there's been too many other cases. More like, obviously, our Norwich game got suspended because or postponed because of um, they had a load of stuff, a load of sort of cases and yeah it's been a tough one like i said like we we face spurs and obviously they had a big big rest and they've come back looking energetic so it's it's just been a weird one i just want to get back to normal exactly well soon we're going to get back to normal well i don't know about the covid situation it's getting worse by the day but um in terms of the actual fixture list it's going to be back to normal it's going to be like every saturday or sunday you're going to play the games um and our game is on a saturday new year's day first game of the new year um, but before we actually go in depth about that game, I just want to talk about your season so far. Look, we're halfway mm -hmm. through the season. It's official and you guys are three points off the top four, as I mentioned. But what has David Moyes done differently this time around that has made you guys make that jump? Because at the start of the season, you guys had one of the hardest fixtures. Um, when I look at the fixtures table, I'm not going to lie. I, I genuinely thought you guys would struggle. <laughs> but you managed to get through that and these, these 19 games... And despite you talking about all this weird fixture list and all these injuries, you've done well so far. So what is it that David Moyes has done differently this time around? Yeah, I think it's just been able to come in and, um, you know, have a plan for how he wants the team to play, the sort of players that he wants to bring in to suit his style and his system. And it's worked, you know, his signings, he's, he's taking control from the board. Sullivan used to chip in and sign the players that he wanted to sign. So we'd end up with all these random players that didn't fit the system. He's, he's he's put a stop to that. So now the players we have been able to sign do fit the way we want to play, um, which is why near enough all of our signings have been successful. <clears throat> um, so that that is a big thing. Um, you know, a lot of them have given us a boost, like Zuma before he got injured was mm. just a massive improvement in our defence. He was, he was huge. Like Bowen obviously coming last season, he's, he's had a great season this year. Antonio like stepped it up. I think like it was until he, he sort of dipped a little bit after his, some of the Jamaica games. I think it's taken it out of him because you know he's traveling to he's traveling around the country, traveling around Europe, and then traveling around uh, like America and the Caribbean. That's a lot of traveling. I think that's yeah. where it's here. But we've we've scored goals from all around the pitch. Ben Rama, man, that guy's been been doing his thing. Like he stepped up this season and and really settled. So yeah, we got them we got the players I think that can can really have really helped us push on and we just need a few more to help solidify us up there. So what what is the expectations then? <laughs> like is it that you want top 4? Cuz you're only three points off it and also in Europe <laughs> you're you're in the European competition as well. So uh, for you it's going to be maybe a bit hard in terms of do you have the squad depth to get top 4 and get a European trophy? Mm -hmm. I'm not too sure. Maybe you know better than me. But um realistically what would you want out of this season for you, for you to say all right this season was actually very successful. I mean we don't have the squad depth yet. Let's see what happens in January. I'm going to see what happens in January. I'm not <clears throat> expecting top four. 
But I look at it and I'm happy to for us to stay in the race for top four, to say that we're in the conversation. And if we get it, it's an amazing bonus. Um, but really, I want to get back in that Europa League. I want consistency. So we finished sixth uh, last season. Mm. I want to finish fifth, sixth this season. That's that's it. If we do that, I'm happy. Anything else is a bonus. But what I, um, what I really want to do is, is really try and go far as, as possible in this Europa League. I'm desperate to see West Ham win a trophy. That would just be everything. That would be dream come true. Um, so if somehow we could really go for this Europa League, that's what we need to do. So, but again, we need the players to help us push on. Like we we lose it. We've lost Creswell. We don't know how long he's out for. That's been a massive loss at left back. Zuma Ogbonna, two of our both our first choice centre backs. We've only got one striker in Antonio. Who you know, like I said, he's I think been been suffering a bit of fatigue, and I feel like Lingard would have been that that other missing piece as well that can really help put some energy in the team. So it, it all depends on January, but yeah, I'm happy to see where we can go, and yeah, maybe even if we just get a cup final in the Europa League, that'd be amazing. Yeah, imagine that, man. Imagine going to a cup <clears throat> final in European competition. But knowing your, knowing our luck, like this season with everything that's going on, it'll probably be like behind closed doors or something like that by the time it reaches it. Um, but talking about that January transfer window, do you think you will go and get them players? Because I know West Ham fans have been upset about the owners, but there, are, there is a new guy in the building now as well. Um, if you want to talk about him as uh, a bit more, um, do you think now that you've brought in a, a, a new person onto the manager onto the board team, do you think that you will go and get them transfers to push onto the top four? Because at the end of the day, you know, even the current owners, surely you'll be looking at it and looking at how much money that they can make from finishing the top four or like top six. European competitions is vital in terms of bringing in revenue as well. Yeah, that's it. Obviously, like you said, Daniel Kretinsky's come in. This is a chance for him to prove that he's serious. Um, and if he can invest something into that transfer budget, it, like like you said as well, there's a great opportunity there. Like we're, we're on the cusp of achieving something special. And if we can just go out and do some good business in this January, we can get there. And, you know, the, the current owners, they've, you know, the fans don't like, don't like them. We're never probably really going to, never going to win us back over again, but they can leave something behind a bit of a legacy that says, you know what? It all wasn't for nothing. And we can hold our hands. You know what? They done a lot wrong, but they left us in a good position. That's, that's up to them. So between them and Kratinsky, if they can do that, I, like I said, I'm, we're, we're linked with a lot of players, but we always are. The, the, the noises are coming out are positive. I always wait to see what happens. I'm never, never commit myself so let's see exactly you don't want to get disappointed <laughs> to be fair whenever we try to bring in players somehow you guys always get linked with it as well but lucky enough we're probably not going to bring in anyone in in this window because we've got enough squad depth um in our team but um in terms of um you know palace so far this season I, i've talked to you off here i know you guys are obsessed with us on twitter <laughs> i know you guys keep up with palace and how we're doing and all of that we got we brought in patrick vieira uh, in the summer, brought in some quality players as well. Um, like so Conor Gallagher on loan, on loan, Mark Gway. What have you made us so far this season? Um, are you actually worried about Palace now? Mm. I mean, certain there are certain West Ham fans that are obsessed with Palace on Twitter. <laughs> um, there's a guy, West Ham Central, who hasn't been on Twitter for a while uh, for some reason. He, oh, hasn't he? he yeah, I, feel, I don't know what happened if he's, his main account got shut down, which had 56,000 followers or something. Oh, okay. And now his other account's gone quiet. So so Palace fans have been getting a little bit of peace and quiet lately. Um, <laughs> but I haven't had too much of a problem. There is, like you said, a lot of that Twitter stuff where, you know, like I see I see Palace fans coming for Ben Rama in the comments. Like, yeah, Ben Rama Eze. versus Eze. Yeah. yeah, Ben Rama versus Eze and all of this stuff. But I mean, I... I don't mind Palace um, too much. I've been liking what you guys have done this season. Um, I'm looking at Edward now and thinking we should have just went out and got him. I think yeah. I think we we changed our mind after we played um, we played Celtic in the preseason, and he had a really sort of poor game against us. But it's preseason. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that kind of put us off him a bit. But looking at it like that could have been that perfect second striker. Um, so he, he seems to, to be doing well. Um, you know, Gallagher's come in, he's been amazing. It'd be great for you guys if you could try and keep him for another season. Maybe that's what 
you know, if I if I'm Chelsea, I'm trying to look at see if there's a clause we can get him back in January. Or they can't, they can't, can't, they can't. That's a, yeah. that's what I think. They they can't because we played him, <clears throat> we played him in over fifty percent of the games. But Gallagher at this point is becoming a myth. It's it, like yeah. we're not going to be able to keep him. We're, we're just simply not. He's he's that good, and we haven't simply got the funds. But you never know. With the likes of Chelsea, they might go bring in a world class player, and then just Gallagher might say, "I want to leave." But yeah, it's it's. it's Hopefully he stays. Hopefully he stays. Yeah. Well, like I said, even if you can get him on loan for another season, I'll be happy um, with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That that would be big. But yeah, I've been massively impressed with what Vieira has done because when I looked at, it, I thought, look, if Vieira comes in now after Roy and he just focuses on like all he, like all his expectation should be is just make sure Palace stay up, like stabilize the club, then build something, then try and build what you're trying to do. But I think he's exceeded. The, the expectations because you know he's not only come in after Roy and and you know done a good job but he's actually had you guys playing some some good football as well um and there's been a lot of games I think there's quite a few games this season where you've been quite unlucky the Arsenal game the Brighton game um things like that and you're only five points off of like seventh you know which is a European <laughs> spot like you're still <laughs> there thereabouts and you've had Eze missing who's a key player for you guys um, you know, you've had a few injuries and COVID cases. So, yeah, I think if you can get those players and keep them fit, I think you could have um, a good season. Like, because if you, I think you could finish top 10, which is great first season mm. for Vieira. And then the owner needs to decide, I think he needs to decide what he wants. Because he's not like, I looked at how much he's actually worth. He's not actually broker. Like, he's, got, he's worth a bit of money. Like, he has money. We've got so quite a bit of new owners there now. Dan, we got like it's not only Steve Parrish, we got um John Texo who came in and he's trying to provide funds for he actually provided funds for the um window and right. he's we're trying to build a new stand and he's involved with that. We got um American owners in terms of uh Blitz and uh, Blitz and Harris, which you own like N NBA teams and NHL teams and some other teams. Mm. So you're right, we got some wealthy owners, it's not only Steve Farish, but Please say it's the away stand he's rebuilding because the, the view is so <laughs> Don't even talk about away stand. When we're at the West Ham Stadium, it's like I need to bring a binoculars. Like the, the pitch is all the way. It's, it's, not, even, least, it's not even in Flipper Stadium. I'm at least you get a clear stadium. view and you ain't what got do you mean some a clear view? flipping There's, there's like a is. running track. There's a running track in between like the pitch and the... Like, <laughs> no, nah, you're like, kind of on the running track. You're kind of on halfway. At least with we'll Sellers Park is a proper ground. It ain't no Olympic stadium. It's, it's called a football stadium. You're sitting it's near a... the back, you've got some beam like blocking. <laughs> like So when it, when you're attacking, when we're attacking down the right-hand side or the left-hand side, depending which way we're attacking, you can't <laughs> see what's that, where, where the ball, you can't see the ball or anything. Like, it's ridiculous. No, that's they, what they, we they, lack, man. You, you don't want it to be comfortable. You don't want it to be comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Away, yeah. Well, it's away, you teams. and... You and you and Newcastle, man, take the mic. Oh, uh, Newcastle, Newcastle. You just travel like there's another two hours to go up the stairs, to yeah, that, exactly. in the away section. Um, but talking about your actual players that like you mentioned, Jared, um, you know, Bowen, Rice, um, Antonio, you got some quality players there. But who would you pick right now as the most informed player that we need to watch out for? Yeah, I'd say it's Jared Bowen. Like, he's been Jared Bowen's been the most consistent player lately, and that was my problem with him, um, earlier on in the season consistency and finishing and even towards the end of last season he'd have a couple of good games and go off the ball but he has definitely been someone who I can say is our most consistent player his energy his pressing work rate has, has, has been exceptional and um you know he scored quite a few goals this season and assists he got a hat trick of assists against Watford and I think wrongly got a goal ruled out what should have been a goal that should have stood so right now he's he's on one massively um, and we've got obviously, like I said, Ben Rama. He got a, a goal, I think he's two and two on the score sheet at the moment. So he's someone I think that he's got something to prove. And if he starts, he'll be on one, um, for sure. So it's gonna be interesting. This is his last game before he goes to the African Cup of Nations as well. Okay, so I think he's gonna want to want to leave with a on, on a high note and then and then go out. Have you got have you got any problems with the Afcons in terms of not you of like I'm just talking about your team in terms of how many players are going do you reckon is this I think it's be... just Ben Rama I think we're only losing Okay ben that's Rama. your fine then yeah that's Mas or Masuaku I think plays for Congo but I'm mm. not sure what their status what, is Is it going to be a miss for you? <laughs> it says uh, would you be worried if he goes Well 
you know what? I love Masuaku and that going forward, he's great, but defensively, he's a massive liability. Yeah, and then when <laughs> that's he's what I can't for. <laughs> when he's like, that's why I think Ben Johnson will start a left back. Oh, okay. Um, so like, which which he did against Watford, and we was a lot more comfortable there. Was a lot a lot more secure. So, yeah, I think if he starts, the only the only worry I have if about Masuaku going, which I think he's up for sale as well, actually. I wouldn't be surprised mm. if Palace did come into him, in for him because you do leave. No, no, no. Wait, wait a minute. Respect our club, man. We're wait, talking who about you Masuaku. Got Masuaku we, got good. we got Tyreek Mitchell way better than. Hey, don't even no, do that. Come on here and talk about. No, Masuaku. No. Is Dan, a good we're not player. doing this, bro. I'm sorry. I but rate, there's no way you're Masuaku. coming and saying Palace can Palace play him go and wing. buy Masuaku. Play, if you play him on the wing. Like then name on the me. wing. What ahead of Zaha? What? What, what, what is Zaha doing? on the left or the right? Yeah, Zaha's on the left. But even Jordan I is better than Masuaka going forward. Don't do that, man. Uh, Don't do that. You, you're confusing uh, us with the likes of Norwich. We're, nah, we're not that club anymore. Uh, we're not that club I've, anymore. I think you need to put some respect on Masuaki's name. Now, if I said Yarmolenko, then that's another that's another story. He's for sale as well. Bro. You know, but you've had <laughs> Kiara, you had Tompkins. You know what I mean? Like we, we robbed them off you, Tompkins and Kiate. All right, cool. You're doing well this season, but don't forget about the past. You could have had Tompkins and Kiate in the past as well. Well, no, I um, listen. I thought like season. selling Tompkins was a massive mistake because, like, we when he played right back for us, he was we was like winning every game. Like, and then we then we sold him and played the Antonio at right back. So, mm, you know that was well, that was a huge that was a huge oh. mistake. Um. But yeah, like Fredericks is for sale. He's at right back. I don't know if you've got right back at the moment. You're coming. To, you're, you're talking to the wrong club. <laughs> you're, you're talking. I don't, don't know. Want, you guys don't like to your... buy our players. No, no, we like to buy your players. And we're not going to buy just players that don't come into your side and that are struggling. Unless there's like disagreement between David Moyes and. Um... No, but the thing is that might. I don't know where your squad depth is, but if you think about, it, they could be. They could be somewhere where we've got a really good player in that position where X player can't get in. But that player who can't get in maybe is a weak area for your team. And when maybe right back, but is Fredericks really gonna Fredericks. come to Palace? No, is he gonna come to Palace to sit on the because Nathan Ferguson is the next in line? So is he gonna no. come from West Ham to Palace to sit on the bench? Fredericks That's is good saying. enough to start for Palace. He's good enough to start for West Ham. Uh, for, I without doubt. Problem is injuries. That's what's holding back. Injuries. That's the only issue I have with Fredericks. His pace is, is great. He was he was brilliant before he got injured. There's there's good players there, but look, I don't. I'm I'm not even looking for us to be selling anyone because we need that squad depth for sure. Mm. Um, mm. That's that's going to be the main thing, man. For for sure, is, is building up that squad depth. But we, we're crap at selling players anyway. We always sell players on the cheap. So there's exactly we, we have. Well, yeah, there's always bargains. Like even Kiate right now, Kiate is doing he, he's he's doing great for us. He's He's going to be massively missed when he goes to the Afcons. And, you know, Tompkins is a very good squad player. When we did buy him, he was very good for us. We, we were, Every time we buy players off you, it's like, how on earth did we get this player for only like less than £15 million? So it has worked, but I'm not too sure if it will work under Patrick Vieira. We've got a bit more, we need a bit more quality in the side. And the players that you're saying right now, I'm, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure if they fit in. But in terms of weaknesses, um, mm. what is your main tactical weakness that we could exploit yeah. in this game? Um, I mean, our defence has been poor lately. That has been a huge weakness. We've got Diop and Dawson, uh, you know, two of our, they're not our first choice centre-backs. Like I said, the first choice centre-backs are injured. Um, so I think like someone like Zaha can cut in and, and cause Dawson all sorts of problems. Um, anything with pace or, or, or skill like that, trying to catch us out on the counter-attack, um, that I think that can really work in your favour for sure. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's going to be our main weakness and somewhere you can get a lot of joy. I don't know if it's, is is a back. Is he playing? Is he? Nah. Well, he's back, but um, he, I think he's had COVID, so he hasn't been involved in the squad over the last game or two. So it's been. I, I I'm not too sure if he'll come back for this game, but in in the next month or so, he's going to get more game time because we're going to lose Jordan Ayew, we're going to lose Zaha, and we're going to lose Kuyate. So there's going to be like three misses from like midfield um out wide so Eze will be involved but yeah for this game I, I pretty much doubt it we don't even know who's going to be involved in terms of midfield They're like Conor Gallagher he didn't play last game Zaha didn't Ooh. play last game 
Um, so we're, we're not really too sure. With the Gallagher situation, Zaha's going to be back for this game. Yeah. I, I don't know if he starts. That's another debate that us Palace fans are having um, because what? he got... Yeah, well, it's, it's a de- look, he got sent off against Tottenham. It was very silly. But Austin Edward out wide... I know it was against Norwich, but he got goal, two assists, and he's been he's he's been on form. So you can move him up front and put Zaha on the left. But if he's playing good out wide, and if you're talking about problems like Craig Dawson, then honestly, put put on Benteke. He, that will be. I feel like he will struggle against the likes of Benteke, and if you if you do something like that, then it might cause him trouble. But I guess we'll full start. But I'm not. It's not 100 percent certain with Vieira. It really isn't because it's not like Roy Hodgson, where favorite our best players constantly start. It's about proving yourself and being in the squad. And God knows what happens. Um, but it's mm. going to be his last game before he goes to the Icons. But um, talking about predictions now, how do you see it going? How do you see this one going? You uh, guys surely have to back your boys. Surely have to back your I boys. Did, but I'm nervous about this game. Like I am worried. Like coming to Selhurst, it's always it's always a, a struggle when we're there. Um, you know, when we're doing good, even if you're down in the dubs or something, like there could be a situation where you'll like will get a draw with us or or you'll win or like it's it's always a tough place for us to go. If Gallagher, that is the question. Gallagher is, is the player I'm worried about. He obviously caused us a lot of problems at, at home this season. Um that game really frustrated the hell out of me. Like we, we need to <laughs> we need to win. But like it's if my heart says that we're gonna come and win I don't know, man. I think it's <laughs> I'm not too sure if your heart is talking two, facts one. right now. You're not even too sure yourself. But part of me feels like it could be a draw. There's a part of me that's saying like two all. Yeah. Like, I mean, when you say draw, that's what I thought about as well. Like if, a two, oh, we had a two all. We had a two all. Yeah. Like if I if I took if I took my like West Ham, how often I had to bet money on it, I'd probably say 2-2. Two, two. But, listen, we need to win this game. We need it. We need to, to win this game to stay up there. Listen, I've got all of these Tottenham fans coming for me. I've got... Yeah, bro, Arsenal I've seen fans, it. I've seen it. These, yeah, they're all coming <laughs> I've seen it. And they're, they're talking big. And I need to, I need to, I need us to shut them up. I need to silence our critics. <laughs> and we need to win this game. 2-1. That's it. Come on. Two one. Two one. Please. West Ham. Two like, one. It's, it's cool going... for you guys. You know, because you guys could, right now, you guys could afford to lose this game, then go on a run. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I Maybe guess focus so, but... on the FA Cup. Like you said, you wanted the cup run. You're not worried about the league. You but if we I mean? win this game, as you mentioned, we're only like what three points off. Seven. Seven. Yeah, so it it, it it brings questions. Like you don't know, like it's it's we're gonna be uh, trust me, every game we every game that we go into, it's gonna be have you seen Palace already when we faced you guys last time around. Look, you you guys scored a goal, we came back, scored a goal, we came back. So this Palace side is completely different to what we had under Hodgson in terms of every single game, regardless if it's West Ham, if it's City, if it's Norwich, like we go out there trying to play to win. So we're gonna have that same attitude. Um, but over the last two games, we haven't even had a manager. Uh, we missed in the last game uh, against Norwich. I know it's against Norwich, but we didn't have Zaha. We didn't have Conor Gallagher. We we had two goalkeepers on the bench and we still beat them comfortably 3-0. So with more players coming back from COVID situation and hopefully a bit more rest as well, you never know. It, it's going to be a good game. It really mm-hmm. is. I'm, I'm looking forward to it because Ooh. after the two all after the two draw, um, based on our recent form, like both teams are definitely going to be up for it. And you never yeah. know. I'm going for, I'm going for two one Palace. You okay. said two, yeah. I'm going for two one Palace at home. So far this season, we've scored in every single game, and we've only had one loss. So our home form has been great. Really, really one loss at home this season. Yeah, yeah. And funny enough, it was against Villa. Uh, all teams. Um, Jeez, well, in another yeah. Claret and Blue team coming coming to exactly. Selhurst, you know, <laughs> let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, it might happen. It might happen. But Dan, appreciate you coming onto the channel. If you just, if you just want to plug yourself, um, where can they find you? Yeah, like obviously West Ham fan TV for everything. We might be doing a, a watch along for that game, so you can come and check that out. And if you want to follow me personally on Twitter at the Lawless on Twitter. Um, but yeah, and then yeah, like I said, hopefully we batter you on this game, and then best of luck for the rest of the season. Like I said, I like what you guys are doing. Um, I think I really rate Vieira, and I think if he can get if you guys can 
could finish top 10, that would be something good to see and then something that he could really build on as, as long as he don't finish above us. That's all right. Mm. Well, that's it from Dan. That's it from me. Um, hopefully, if you guys have enjoyed it, let, uh, make sure to leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future Palace content. And let us know your score predictions, at score predictions and thoughts on the game in the comment section down below. And until next time, up the Palace. <laughs>